Welcome back to The Social Universe, where you learn the secrets of the social media through the social universe, and in many cases, the secrets of the universe itself. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, we are talking about the strengths and weaknesses of Facebook, um, and the character weaknesses and strengths of Mark Zuckerberg, and how the two could actually, um, if his character weaknesses could be overcome, and he could actually make some decisions. He has the money to turn the world upside down again in a very positive way if he would just do it. Um, but he's not doing it, very frustrated, and so I told you uh, what I uh, would recommend that he do in a positive way and what he's not doing, which is extremely frustrating. Okay, so um, here's what, um, what to me is very, very frustrating. First of all, he has, you know, outside of drugs and sex, he has the third most addictive product in his hands, which is social media. Though that, next to, to sex and drugs, um, he has intimacy. And that, that's what people are getting. Yeah, granted, we all, we all know the difference between real intimacy and artificial intimacy. But the intimacy that people find in, in the social media is strong enough that some of them aren't even equating the difference. And, and I would argue that our younger generation, which now I'm not, this, the, let me uh, park the Mark Zuckerberg discussion for a little bit. These things that, are, that I'm about to discuss are not his fault. But it is changing our society that I couldn't blame it on him, but our society is falling victim as in our younger generations. They're becoming detached. They don't know how to interact with each other anymore unless it's on, on social media or on texting. Um, it, you know, there'll be a bunch of kids in the hallway in school. Instead of interacting with each other, they're texting each other. Um, uh, what ends up happening is a lot of backbiting. Hey, you know, look at that. His hair's poking up in the back. And, you know, hey, you know what? We, we you know, they, they, they plan all of these things where it, it, it just is not... That cyberbullying has become a, big, a bigger and bigger issue because people are, are hiding behind their uh, their their names and uh, these their fake online names. The gaming is the same way, um, and they don't they're they're losing track. Our younger generations are losing track of who they are as human beings. They're becoming cyborgs in their brains, and, and so they also act like cyborgs when it comes time to actually have relationships. They're also becoming way oversexed. You know, by the time they're six years old, they're, they're acting like, they're, like a 36-year-old because they're reading and watching what all of the 36-year-olds are reading and watching because that's what they see coming through their news feed and, they, and the people that they, that they interact with. So, um, that, I think, is sad. Do I blame that on Mark Zuckerberg? No, that's just something that's happening. Um, and, uh, and I, in fact, I'm going to defend Mark Zuckerberg in a few different areas that I really like and I really appreciate about what Facebook does. The first one is, is that they don't recommend that young people get on the social media. And if you're busting that rule, and if you are, are letting your young children get on social media, shame on you. And, and you know what, I know it sounds like I'm getting into your parenting style, but let me talk about what your parenting style is doing. This is what our entire show was supposed to be about today, but it looks like our, our guest wasn't able to make it, um, uh, is sex trafficking. Social media, and again, this is not Mark Zuckerberg's fault, uh, Zuckerberg's fault, um, uh, it just is happening, and they are taking some, making some effort to, uh, to curtail it. Um, but, um, you know, even the NSA, is, as we all know, Mark Zuckerberg sold out the NSA a long time ago. So just know that everything you do, everything that, that, that you, everything you click inside of the social medias, inside of Facebook in particular, but, but also in, in most of your social media programs, is being sent on to the NSA to analyze along with your, your cell phone they, that they're, they're recording and all your texts that they're analyzing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we've talked about that before. But um, but I'm i just going to reiterate a story that I told on the uh, the show a, a while ago um, about a young woman who her her father was a police officer. He was smart enough as a parent to not let her be on Facebook, but uh, he didn't realize uh, what would happen if he let her go to a sleepover where other uh, young girls had uh, Facebook. And so they jumped on Facebook, and they they uh, uh, somebody had uh, as friends on Facebook. Uh, of some what they thought were faux gangsters. Okay, so you know it's really hard to distinguish the difference between a real gangster that's running around and committing real crimes.
crimes um, versus a faux gangster, somebody who wants to look like he commits crimes, but he really is a, you know, just trying to look cool, and he's really just a geek in uh, baggy jeans. So anyway, <laughs> there's, it's just hard to know the difference, right? And yeah, how do you expect? I mean, when, when a, a young woman is, you know, uh, 7 to 16 years old, they're still just infant babies. They're, they don't understand the real world. They don't understand what's going on. Um, and so they believe what they see. So anyway, these, uh, these full gangsters and, uh, invited the, this group of uh, girls from the slumber party to, uh, to come down and they, they would get them into a, a, uh, a party. Um, well, what am I talking about? A nightclub. You know, they would give them the, the VIP treatment when they'd get them past the bodyguard and, you know, the, the, the uh, guard at the front and, and get them into the back and, you know, give them the VIP uh, treatment. Well, lo and behold, you know, I guess they must have had a 16-year-old in their midst or maybe somebody's older sister came and picked them up and they, they, they went. But lo and behold, sure enough, they got past the, the, the guard and, and uh, the bouncer, okay, is the proper term here, um, and uh, went into the back. Um, and uh, yeah, they got VIP treatment. They were raped for three to six hours until the pimps from Tucson could come up and buy them. Um, and uh, that was the way these, uh, uh, they, they call them uh, Romeo pimps. So um, they, they, uh, they, the Romeos are the age of the young girls or maybe a little bit older and they pull them in and then they, they sell them off as sex slaves and what they get is the, the payment they get is the sex um, and while they're coming up to get them. So anyway, the reality is, and again, I need to be warning you, if you have kids listening to the show, you, you want to, uh, you want to kind of keep them away from this and explain it to them in your own words. I'm, try, I'm not trying to be their parents. I'm trying to, um, to, to tell you, the parent, how to address these issues. Uh, and uh, so anyway, these young women, uh, some of them they never, ever, ever found. Luckily, um, the, one of the young, uh, the young women, her, um, the one I'm telling the story about, uh, the reason why we're telling it about her is because she was actually found. And uh, this, uh, How old? Uh, she was 13. She was 13 years old, by the way. Um, and um, uh, uh, she was uh, missing for, it took them six to eight months with the entire police force of Arizona looking for her. It still took six to eight months until they finally found her. And she had been forced to have sex 18 hours a day, uh, nonstop, um, uh, during that six to eight months time period. So, you know, they're literally merchandise. Sex slaves are literally merchandise. That, that the, the only price of that merchandise is whatever they, they paid, you know, uh, uh, for the nightclub to, to be doing the sinister stuff, this terrible, grotesque debauchery that they're, that they're going through. Um, and, uh, and then some food to barely keep them alive. Um, and granted, it is also something that has kind of come to light that we're going to talk about today, is that once somebody has been sold into sex slavery, um, and by the way, there's 27 million women uh, worldwide in the, the sex slave uh, trade that are like this, that, that are literally um, uh, being used as merchandise for sex for, you know, they're unwilling participants in, in, uh, in the sex trade. So uh, anyway, uh, with these 27 million women, um, they um, have to have a way to control them. So the other, you know, just from a product standpoint, the cost of doing business, the COGS and this many, uh, uh, cost of goods and services for them, uh, is that they also pump them full of drugs. Um, and that's their insurance if they ever get away um, to a safe house, for example, and that was the nonprofit that we were gonna bring on today, uh, was a safe house where these uh, young women can actually escape to. I, um, they found that after, you know, once the girls were uh, arrived and were safe, and it came time to actually try to uh, rehabilitate them away, because you have to, to realize that um, one of the strategies, and I'm surprised that these young women that I'm telling the story about were still kept in Tucson. Normally, they sell them away to a different part of the world or a different part of the country, so it's not just a hop, skip, and a jump back to back to their home. Um, but uh, and so when uh, uh, when the word does get out that there's a, a haven that they can go to and they run they uh, you know get away from their pimp and and uh, run to the the haven, um, they're now drug addicts and so they, they and and the haven is not uh, in the business of administering drugs um, and uh, so they actually find well I can't get drugs here and they actually go back into sex slavery. Um, not to mention that they have had, a, uh, well, let's continue on with the story about what happens. Uh, they actually put a brand, they actually brand the, the young women as the, you would cattle. Um, and 
um, and it's the Pimps and Brown, so you know who that uh, that woman belongs to. Um, and uh, and then also they have their own system of uh, uh, what would you call it? Um, oh, I've forgotten the the, the police term um, uh, when they when they uh, let the world know, hey, we're looking for this particular criminal. Um, the the, uh, the pimps have their own way of letting the, their, their internal way to know, hey, we've lost a slave um, and we uh, we are looking for, they, they essentially put, have a dead or alive um, uh, reward out there for them. They pull them back either alive and, and press them back into slavery or they actually uh, just kill them. Um, and uh, they make it very public that uh, if they find them out there and they, they aren't able to put a president back into slavery, uh, that they'll kill him. And with this particular young woman, after when they finally found her uh, branded and nearly dead after, uh, after eight months, um, uh, having to get off of drugs and all kinds of things um, that, that just no young woman should ever have to deal with, what um, uh, what they did is they actually issued an alert that that, they, that she would be killed on sight. Um, so she actually had to change her identity, change her name, um, and uh, I, I mean her world was literally destroyed as a result of this. So yes, if you think that your kids are okay being on Facebook, I hope that you think again because they are not okay um, being on Facebook. And I'm I'm hoping that uh, that the parents here. Um, can uh, can get that message. So I think it is time for uh, a break again. Um, and uh, um, I'm going to just say the two things that I really like about, about what Mark Zuckerberg is doing. One is is that um, yeah, he does have uh, recommended ages so that this type of horrible thing doesn't happen to the unsuspecting young kids like uh, like this, as well as things that are maybe not that bad. You know, might be just I mean. Date rape all of a sudden sounds like not as bad of a thing compared to the the, the sex slavery, but you know they're horrible. They you know the the sexual predators, um, they prey on children, things of that nature. Um, he's done a lot better job, a lot better job than MySpace did. MySpace was terrible. He does a, a lot better job of making uh, identifying that you know you don't have a fake profile, even though there's a lot of fake profiles out there. So you can't rely on that uh, uh, for sure. But he's done a better job than MySpace did. And then the other thing I really appreciate is if you don't like the type of smut that gets advertised um, in the social media and there is a ton of smut I mean if, if you think about what uh, Mark Zuckerberg founded Facebook on it was actually founded on the concept of stalking women so and raiding women and, and you know demeaning women and, and you know it was a, a highly chauvinist um, uh, product to begin with and, uh, and it continues to be uh, a highly chauvinist product and it tends to be a lot about stalking women as well. So the men use it to stalk women, the women use it because they, you know, create, they have that relationship uh, uh, fulfillment. I'm not saying men don't use it for that reason as well, but, uh, we, but men do tend to be a little bit more hardcore with it from the standpoint of stalking. Um, and I, need, I also, just a little side point, needs to get rid of the poke. That's just the most stupid, disgusting thing that's out there. Yeah, having somebody poke you, dumb. If you use the poke, stop using the poke, okay? It's a dumb word as well. They need to come up with a different word, <laughs> okay? It's just all the way around a bad idea. So, but, the, you know, that's a Mark Zuckerberg personality thing. He likes to stalk, he likes to poke, he likes to, you know, get in the space of women. It's just not something that, that is uh, anything but demeaning. Um, but what I do like is if there is an ad that comes up that you don't feel is right and it's not something you like, I like that you can tell them, I don't like this. Um, and uh, whereas Google doesn't even do that, they just track and see what your behavior is and they do it automatically. So if you don't want to have a porn ad showing up on the side of Google, don't surf porn <laughs> because they're going to throw up porn ads on the side if you're surfing porn. Um, and so, uh, but in Facebook, I actually like that he allows you to train it to give you the type of ads that you like. I think that is wonderful. That didn't really come from him though. It came from uh, when they went public. They got a lot better about that. Um, but um, I got a little bit long in the tooth on this one and so uh, when we come back from break I'm going to give you what I think that Mark Zuckerberg should do in a positive way that he hasn't done. If he did, he'll take over the world. If he doesn't do it, he's going to lose um, uh, lose momentum. Somebody else is going to step in and take over where he hasn't. So don't go away. We'll be right back after the break. This is Kurt Wilhelm, the host of The Social Universe here on World Talk Radio Voice America and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 